Hello there, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at landscapes. These are scenes from my local river walk and therefore something called Landscape Art Club. I'm going to be showing you some of my own examples and explain what Landscape Art Club is. Then we are going to look at the process where I put down a watercolour base and then I'm going to use mixed media to add further details to these scenes. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of Landscape Art Club. It is over on Instagram and it's something that I like to do quite regularly. This is the last version that I did. It's of a, a Welsh castle. And if I click on their profile, this is their Instagram. And every week they have some new images uh, people have sent in. This week is of Iceland. I can't wait to paint this. I would love to paint this. Uh, but um, in previous weeks they have had, uh, like this one here is a lake in Rome. So people just pick any one of four images and you can do it in any style. Hi, I'm Omar. I'm an artist, illustrator and author and I help artists improve their skills by sharing my knowledge from filling 50 sketchbooks. Landscape Art Club is open to everybody and I will put the link in the description below. This is sketchbook 32 and this was from the end of 2022. And um, there's always about four, five images and you can choose whatever. So I chose three um, as a series of two small panels and, and one larger one. And I think she tries to keep it quite seasonal, the lady who runs it. And it was really great to do this as a sort of a, a value uh, contrast exercise between the, the trees and the snow. Uh, this is another version. I loved this one, loved it. Uh, you can see that I've used watercolour and coloured pencil and also that's a little bit of brush pen here. Now let's take a look in this one. This is number 34. This is a Hannah Muller sketchbook. And this is of um, Lake Caresa. Again, a mixture of watercolour and coloured pencil, a bit of Posca pen there. Uh, I just think it's a really great way to explore your style and uh, see what your materials can do. Uh, this would have been fairly early on in my mixed media career, so um, I, I hadn't quite got the hang of using a mixture of Posca and um, coloured pencil. Um, I, I love to travel and I love seeing all different parts of the world and every week it's like a brilliant surprise. Uh, this was in Germany, I believe, a lighthouse um, overlooking the North Sea. And there's one more. Uh, this was um, somewhere in England. It might have been somewhere like Richmond and uh, just really gorgeous landscapes. If you love landscape, then please, please consider Landscape Art Club. Uh, these would be my most recent versions. Um, oh, hold on, I've missed one. So this was maybe, was it Malta? I'm not sure. I should have written it down really, but I love seeing what people send in. And I think working in panels works um, well for me. Can you see the little swimmer there? That's my favourite part. And um, this was um, Japan, but it was from quite a few months back. I absolutely wanted to paint this because um, this bamboo forest in Kyoto is on my bucket list. And I would eventually, I'm gonna eventually end up in this place to paint it for real. And one more. Uh, this is of a Welsh castle. This was actually a um, time study for my Patreon group. So I think I did both of these in about 40 minutes, something like that. And mucking about with uh, neo colours and mixed media, really. Now, I'm particularly excited because I submitted these photos. This is of my local walk along the river over to Hartford. This is on the River Lee and I submitted these and she accepted them and they are going to be on Landscape Art Club this week. Do look in the description for the link. I'm going to try and paint two of these. I don't know which one yet. Maybe this narrow boat. Um, 
So this building is a gauge house. It was built in the 1800s to restrict some of the water flowing. And this area here um, is a floodplain. And it's just, you can just make it out. It's very, very marshy. But I do sometimes traipse across here because there's a little seat and it's very peaceful to sit there. I'll be using my watercolors. Probably I will use some of these colored pencils might use gelettos and I might use these Neo Colour 2s. Sketchbook that I'm using today is the Hannah Muller 100% Cotton and I really don't have a plan. I'm going to start by drawing a box basically with this coloured pencil. Um, sometimes I find that if, if I create a panel it helps me to concentrate on a uh, certain area. Uh, the images are rectangular but I want to um, make sure that the boat is kind of central I suppose. This is a canal boat and you, I see them all the time on the River Lee. The horizon line is roughly a third of the way down. It's, it's kind of the edge of the boat is about here and the, there's a grass verge that sort of goes up against it and um, there's also some reeds as well. There's a path, there's grass on this side. Okay, you've got bushes here, a tall tree there. I don't know, yeah, I think I'll add that. And um, all across here are just trees and it'd be good to use um, that as negative space for the boat. I'm not, even though the boat is blue, I'm not sure that I will um, make it blue just so that it, it really pops against that river, something like that. that. That's enough for me. I'm just trying to plot things in. There's the river bank. Um, I'm not the best with man-made stuff. Uh, that, that's the grass that runs alongside the path. And you've got all the reeds as well. And people actually live on these canal boats. Um, I would love to have a canal boat holiday just to see what all the fuss is about. I'm sure it's very pleasant going at quite a sedate pace, looking at the countryside. I should imagine it's very, very peaceful. Ooh, I, it's something like that, something like that. And, um, the landscape sort of slopes upwards like that ish something like that okay so that's good for that side and I was going to do the um the gauge house on this side and these are I'm hoping will be time studies or let's say I, I don't want to be faffing with this too much I don't want to um I often just use the images from Landscape Art Club as just a, a bit of fun on a Friday or at the weekend. Now the horizon line on here is a, probably a little bit lower, about there, and you've got all this marshy stuff happening and grasses, and the, the edge of the house, I don't think anybody has ever lived there. They meet together something like that. And when I was taking this photo, there were all these pigeons flying around. You can see them on the roof. And the, but you do have this massive tree. It's probably a hawthorn or something. Um, along, sort of occupies this entire area here. And behind the house, it's actually on the other bank. Oh, there's also railings, but I'll, I'll add that at a later stage. And um, there's other things built up there. I'm going to create a line of trees that go beyond slightly more than the roof of the house. It's artist prerogative. I just think it's going to create a little bit more drama and the rest is sky. So I think that's it for now. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And in the comments, let me know if you've ever taken part in Landscape Art Club. When I work simultaneously, um, 
I tend to use the same colors throughout. So I'm gonna mix up the, the green. I'm running out of the green gold. It's one of my favorites. And I often use this just as like a base color. I just find it really, really luminous. Um, starting on this side here, you can see a patch of green just here. So I'll add that as well and use that same green next to the canal boat along this verge here. So this is green and this is green. Oh, by the way, I'm using a Jackson's Art quill brush, my favorite. I can see tiny patches of green along here. I mean, the bright green, I am gonna be mixing some other things in this. Right, let's create those different greens now. I can, it's very, very dark. This is, um, this picture was taken in February. There's nothing on the trees. I'm going to say that, uh, that the trees behind the, the roof of this gauge house is darker. It might not be, but that's what I want to do with my particular landscape today. I'm gonna bring, bring it right up to the edge of the house. Okay, and um, there's an archway. You can just see it peeping through here, and that is what will let the water through um, into that. That there's a the actual river lee behind here. And let's just put a bit of the same green in this hedge here. It's very dark in this. Oh, I love the way it's done that. Oh, love, 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 love. And I can see, I'm, I can see sort of a pinkness in the house. I don't know how else to describe it. Right, I'm not gonna do the house yet. I, I almost got distracted. Let's get the green sorted out, but I, th I don't think that's quite right. That is not gonna work. Okay, let's mix up something else. And if I squint, this tree is darker than this side of the house. So I've got to make sure that it is relatively dark. I'm gonna to have to go back and add some pops of Payne's Grey. I suppose you can just see the trunk doing that. Oh, I, oh, I love it. Maybe extend some of that up to about here. And go back to this side. Now, even though there's this roof on this canal boat, it is darker than the landscape behind it, but um, I'm gonna pretend it isn't just because I want to use the landscape behind it as negative space. I think I've got the angle of this, uh, the roof of this houseboat wrong. Probably does more like that. Probably, yeah. And where it meets the actual river, it's not as dark. So um, I'm gonna be mindful of that. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please do consider joining my Patreon where we can paint together once a month during a live Zoom call and I upload plenty of exclusive process videos like this for my members. So while we've got this darker green happening, let's drop in some, some lights. I might add a bit of ochre or even some brown actually. and it'll, it'll merge, which is gonna look great. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just looking at the reference again and really, really looking that I'm squinting. I think I'm gonna ha I will have to go in with a smaller brush. So going around the boat, and that's the surface of the river, all, all in here, all this area here is dark, so um, popping in that you can use ultramarine if you want and there's some other trees behind there it's probably more of a gray but it doesn't matter probably extends upwards a little bit more and I can kind of see purple or red in amongst there there and maybe around about here. And this is um, reeds, which is kind of a dull sort of beige. And I can 
if I just do something like this, I can use colored pencil to, to give that a bit of texture. They're pretty pale. Hold on, there's some of this red comes through here as well, up to the edge of my frame here. Oh, that's gonna look really good. Hold on, I, because I've added a bit of red to that, let's see if I can add a bit of ready purple to this side as well. I'm just gonna drop it in here. I'm just gonna extend this brown, even though I can't really see much brown, actually I can just in this area here. It's just a bit of the grass in the foreground. I'm gonna add a bit of brown there and also here. And while I'm at it, while I'm at it, um, let's use some of this brown, browny purple, which I, you know, I don't know quite how I made that up, but I'm gonna um, use that to paint in the side of this house and the chimney. Oh, that's better. It was getting a little bit dull. It is paler as you move down to the house. And I'll probably add the window details using coloured pencil. I don't, I don't do very detailed work using watercolour. I just, um, I don't have the patience. Okay, and I will um, bring some more greenery into the foreground using coloured pencil as well. I'm just looking at this area here. It's, it's, I think it's kind of reeds. Oops, I don't, I don't think I meant to have done that. It doesn't matter. Right, now let's, move back to the other image the canal boat um no it's it's a cool gray let's use a bit of windsor blue in there but very very pale very pale indeed i'm not going to add the um fill up the whole part um now i'm i'm not entirely sure how i'm going to do the canal boat i might just leave that and use colored pencil or something else to um, give it a bit more details. Before I forget, I've got to fill in the, the path here and I can see shadows across it. it it's, it's a warm color, but I can add texture using colored pencil. By my reckoning, I've probably spent about 20 minutes to get to this stage where I've got the rough shapes down in watercolour. Now this is dry, I think what I'd like to do is add the sky in both of these pieces before I get too bogged down with the um, adding all the pencil or mixed media detail and uh, I often just use a, a Windsor blue um, I'm going to wet some areas here and drop in some extra blue um, pigment and it should diffuse out I don't think I've got enough water on here it's okay I can add some more I think that might be it. I think I'll just leave it at that. Um, I tend not to uh, do too much with the sky because uh, I, I very often I say, oh, I just do this, I just do that. See, I'm doing it right now. And then it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, I wish I hadn't, you know, spent so much. Right, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> all right, let's do the other sky. Uh, the picture in this one, there's a, it's a lot brighter blue up here and then it kind of becomes paler to, as we head down towards the house. So let's add a bit of um, pale blue down here and then we'll build up the blue going upwards. 
that there is a patch of white there and up there. Let's move that little dog clip. Oh, that's probably a little bit too dark. Doesn't matter, I'll just add a bit more water to that and bring it down. Um, yeah, I think that's about it really. I think we need a tiny bit more blue here. And it, I think I, we need to diffuse it off just on this side here. On this side, I do want to concentrate on the shape of this boat. I've realised that um, the, the sides of the boat actually slope in a little bit, so I might do that. And, and this is the roof section and it does that. So uh, what I'm going to do is use my coloured pencil to, you know, I, I've had my glasses off for the whole time. I've realised there's actually another uh, boat along here but i'm going to pretend it's not there so uh, i'm this is uh see no dark indigo sorry uh luminance pencil and i'm just going to fill that in there and the 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 reeds go to about here and the river's there so add a bit more dark here and um, down the base of this tree that just goes up into the sky um, so something that I've just noticed is there's this tiny patch of grass here. I don't know if I if I use um, I know this the grass here is not pink. This is uh, the Holbein colour pencil, and it has this lovely ability to create marks like that, which I think look absolutely gorgeous. So uh, I might use that um, in the reeds here as well. I'm oh, actually, you know what, I'm going to use in the reeds. Hold on. I'm trying to look for, there's a metallic, it's a gold and it doesn't really behave like a gold, it's more of a, an off green and I might just add some of that in the reed beds and if I wet it, it might create some nice effects as well. Right, I need to get a bit of colouring into this boat, um, it, 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 it is a blue and I'm not entirely sure how. I don't like that blue. I want a pale blue. It is darker than the, the river behind it. And I've just wet my finger and I'm just rubbing it in like so. And then the, the housing area, this part here is much darker and it's got windows. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do the rest of this boat. I could go in with watercolour again. There's some round windows there as well. There's another window, but I don't think I can fit it in. Um, all right, let's use this pencil while I've still got it in my hand. It's the um, Indithrone Blue Luminance. We might get away with just using line. So the edge of the boat is here and you've got reeds going up against that um, the hull of the boat. If I can try and find sort of a, uh, hold on, if I try and grab this one. Oh, you can hear my pencils clattering around. This is misty green and this is green ochre. Oh, there's also a gangplank, which I've just noticed here as well. If I um, use a sort of a, dark grey. This is a Payne's Grey 60, I think. Yeah. Put my glasses on. <laughs> Up to there. Okay, so that's the gangplank. And it's really, really dark under here. Right. And then you've got reeds and such happening on the other side of it. If I try and use a damp finger to merge some of that in. Where's that blue gone again? And we've got various stripey things happening on this boat. Here, it's really, really dark. And it starts to bend round, probably 
does something like that. It is really low in the water. I hadn't noticed that before. It probably comes up to about here and you've got reeds in front of that again. So um, use some of this Neo color and blend that in. This is the edge of the boat. Like I said, it's pretty low in the water. It's dark there. You can just see the reflection and then the roof bends in like that. Oh, you know what? I, I don't think I'm gonna fill this in. It's, it's just gonna to be too, too dense, too dark. So I'm just gonna um, keep it as line work, I suppose. I think I'm, because I'm not very sophisticated when it comes to sort of engineered, man-made things like this. Now, one of my favorite colors is Carmine Lake, and I'm just going to extend, <laughs> I've got so many pencils in my hand. I know my clock is ticking by, and this is what happens. I start mucking around, um, and I get too caught up in the details. And we've got much brighter green grass here, which I also want to include. And um, I what, what I wanted to do was use negative space to sort of backfill these reeds. I don't know if I can pull it off though. Um, if I'm really squinting, I suppose the boat as it nears the water, it is getting darker. So I could use that as negative space against the reeds. It is really dark here. Oh, look, I've done it, I've done it. Oh, I'm jolly pleased about that. And it's, if I squint, the reeds are lighter than the, the, the surface of the, the water here. And before I forget the, um, I can see the opposite bank. And I can see bits of green poking out here. You can walk along there. I have done that before, but then I took a wrong turn and I ended up in a farmer's field where I shouldn't have been. So I was um, technically trespassing and the farmer saw me. She didn't tell me off. She just um, told me <laughs> the right directions. <laughs> That's indigo. I'm just going to give a bit more shape here. I, I did, couldn't work out what the places was going on. Hold on, where does this path go? You can just make out the path, the green snaking its way just there. Oh, and I was going to add a bit of texture in this gravel path. Hold on, hold on, right. I'm d trying to do too many things at once, right. Okay, let's do things methodically. Let's work from left to right and um, just work th that way round. And then the, we've got some sort of rugged bushes happening. Good, that's good. And yeah, so this is, that's the path on the other side of the river. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring that pencil all the way to the edge of that boat. Okay, now, where's that indigo? And a bit of detail like that, and this, there's a few ripples on the surface of the water. Now, in terms of the boat, I just want to add a few more details. There's, um, this is some kind of, uh, it's not a permanent covering, but there, there is windows in there. It's like a plastic kind of sheeting coming up over it. Um, I've no idea how these things work. There must be some kind of a doorway. I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I do not know what's going on in there because I don't know my way around a boat at all. And we've got reeds here. I'm trying to work out, is there enough information for a viewer to understand what's happening here? And before I forget, let's add a little bit of texture to this gravel. And that's a neo color I'm using. 
just want to smudge some of that in I think we need to bring the green round a little bit more I don't I don't like the fact it just stops there okay that's looking good that's looking good I do, I'm not overly sure about this boat being left as it is where's that blue I'm just going to bring this blue up into here just add a little bit more detail here at the front that's that's improved it quite a lot actually if I just really define the edges there and there's quite a defined edge here Although, oh, there's this, there would be an, a lovely, just want to pick out a bit more of the gravel. This is the uh, Holbein Salmon Pink. Oh, I, you know what? I just want to bring in some of that Salmon Pink into the reeds. Oh, I love it. If you, if you put, you know, Salmon Pink on this side of the picture, um, even though it might not technically be Salmon Pink, there it, it just draws the eye around the piece and it just follows this pink around i can put it in there as well there's actually tree silhouettes in the background here but i quite like that as it is i could right leave that one as is let's do the other one and i hope um, I won't spend too long on this one but only because um, i just don't do boats while I've got this uh, lovely salmon pink in my hand, let's just um, divide up this house a little bit better. There's a square and there's an arch. All right, I'll just use Payne's Grey. And I'm not sure I'm going to paint in that house. I quite like it with a white roof and the surrounding trees. So that's the edge of the roof. That's the eaves see some sort of pattern like that and there's three windows whoops that's probably a bit wide that one oh there's another window here there's probably another window here but I there's there is a bush in the way but um, I'm just going to pretend there is they should ideal they should probably be directly underneath one another but um, isn't going to happen in my piece and this one is very very dark so let's fill that one in and the chimney because it's got a chimney and it's built in Victorian times um, you know if people went there just to check things out, built themselves a little fire, had a cup of tea. Right, I can see one of um, cute little fence, not fence, railings coming onto this grass. And it borders, um, what you can't see is in here, down here, going into this arch is a much, much smaller river. And so this is the edge and I want to emphasize that so um, the, f the fence is kind of a gray green color but I might just use this blue it runs across the whole length something like that and there is a bench which I like to sit on um, I don't know what to do about this bit here. I feel like I should fill it in somehow, but do I want to? Do I need to? I, I'm already thinking this is kind of like <laughs> the, the most that I want to do. I feel like looking on onto this side, I've almost overworked it because I was so caught up with the details of that boat. So let's go in with this gold neo color this often happens with me if i'm a little bit unsure and i'm sure it happens with you guys as well um, i tend to overwork and i get annoyed with myself afterwards and luckily i can use the edge of this neo color just to pick out the direction of this grasses and actually you know what i'm 
might do just add little patches of blue where I can see this sort of slightly boggy area. It all dries out in the summer. I don't know about English bylaws, like ancient laws, but cows are allowed in this area of the field and so you have to be careful if you want to make um, a shortcut. So you could cut diagonally to get to um, Hartford. Yes, <laughs> avoid cows and cow pat if it's um, that time of year when cows are allowed in that field. So because I use some of that lovely salmon pink, I want to bring it into this piece as well. And that's lovely. And I also this, um, what was this? The cobalt green, very, very nice. I want to bring that here as well. Might add some of that here. And I, there's, I think on just here, you can see there's a house on the other side of the river just peeping through. And there's probably a patch of grass there as well on the other side of the river. And I'm just gonna darken this area here and bring it right up to the house. This is just too stark. I need to do something about here. This, I might just use this gold green. Oh, that, that, that has made the difference. It was just my eye was getting drawn to this negative space that I'd left behind. Might use a bit of gold green in there as well. I think we're, we're done. That's probably the most that I want to do. Actually, I might just height bring a bit of height to the trees just along here. Yeah, that's about it. Define the edge of that roof. How about that? Just continue that there's a big patch of grass, rough grass here. Okay, I think we're kind of done. Right, let's take a closer look at these two pieces. I think I've done a pretty good job. I probably spent more like 42, 43 minutes. Um, so not bad in terms of faffage time. I am rather taken by this little landscape that I've done here on the right. It's one of my favorite views along the river. I'm not gonna get beat myself up about this canal boat. I don't often paint canal boats and that angle was really, really tough for me. So I'm glad I left it mainly white. I think if I try to fill it in, if you look at that reference image, it almost merges in with that tree, the line of trees in the background. So I think I probably did uh, myself a favor there. And the other little areas that I love are uh, <laughs> this, this bit here. I know it just seems like such a small area, but I just think the colored pencil on top of the watercolor works wonderful. And also using that salmon pink throughout both the landscapes, especially in the grasser areas, it echoes the tone of that house as well. So overall, I am jolly pleased